we are back to the next level show for those that see me on youtube that was me just chopping it up with my moves it was I'm me ready. dodging yeah just i was basically like fighting mike from the other screen and he's just dodging my hits like a yep. ninja well welcome um, everyone to the this fitness podcast we have a good topic lined up before we get into it just a quick couple things to keep in mind like we said we do have a youtube channel if you're not aware of it you can go and search it on at the next level show go ahead and subscribe to the channel show some support you can see the if you're someone that just enjoys that type of format seeing the, our actual uh, facial expressions certain gestures that we do mike playing with his beard stuff like that you can actually check that out on youtube if you prefer the audio we still appreciate you checking this out on any one of choice we are on spotify uh, apple uh, podcast google uh, google play if it's still a thing i think they changed their name recently and uh what was the other one stitcher basically any audio we are most likely there at this point i can't that's, keep that's, track of everything it's like an annoying amount of options yeah but yeah what that what that does and usually i don't even pay attention pay attention to the other numbers when it comes to what's going on with those analytics what i'm paying attention to is obviously youtube apple spotify so those are the main movers let's be real i don't know i haven't met anyone that's like oh yeah listen to uh, google play very rare like i think i've met maybe one person if that so yeah we are on those platforms big numbers let's keep going Keep supporting the channel. We appreciate you guys. Oh, real right. quick too. Um, I wanted to put this out at the beginning because I feel like a lot of people uh, miss this part. Down below, show notes to this episode, exactly where it's at, exactly where we talk about individual topics or each specific point that's being made, as well as our Instagram handles, my personal account at John Alba Fitness, the next level shows at the next level show. Gabe is at Prime and Glory. Mike is at Mike Nillis PT. You can check all those handles out there. So follow us, support us, message us. If you have any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns about the show, we are there for you guys. Mr. Mike, what are we going to say, Brian? Sorry, I cut well, you off like twice. No, it's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, I can think of like three good reasons to at least check out the YouTube channel. And if you haven't checked it out before, I mean, first of all, you don't know what we look like, which adds a whole extra layer to like getting to know us. But secondly, if you haven't seen YouTube, especially the, the past couple of videos that we've posted, you wouldn't be able to tell that Jonathan actually hasn't changed his shirt in like two and a half weeks. He's been wearing the same shirt for like 20 fucking days in a row. And if you don't see us on YouTube, then you wouldn't know that. Yep. Have your clients like said anything about like, why aren't you? Or did you just order like 10 pairs of it? No, it, the pro what's happening is that I've had, and I didn't know what they were talking about when they said this, they were making like face expressions. And then I don't know where my clients started wearing masks at the gym and like, it's not <laughs> even a requirement, you know? So it's like, I was confused as to why, but now you're saying something, it might be because I stink. So yeah, because you should probably, probably wash that shirt. No, but it's just, it's so valuable that I just don't want to do that. The essence, the original essence is still there and I just don't. My dog still loves me. That's all that matters. Yeah. Dogs true. like stinky dogs like stinky stuff. Also, second reason, you wouldn't be able to tell. I am recently, I just I literally just discovered I have hairs in my mustache that's changing colors. I don't know if it's blonde or if it's gray. And if you were on YouTube, you'd be able to help me figure that out. I think it's I think it's blonde, probably from Bush Gardens or just sun gray. exposure. I, think it's I mean, I'm bro. I'm definitely getting more gray hairs. Um, I saw you in person a couple weeks ago and you can tell that your beard's getting a lot of grays. Yeah. It's probably from all of the stress. Um, <laughs> the um, lack of self-care. No, I was actually, I, I funny that you pointed out the shirt and for people that don't see, it's my shirt that I've been wearing for the last like 500 episodes. Um, so I've been wearing this shirt to get me into the mindset to do legs and typically record on the same days. So it's the same day I do legs. So I saved this in particular shirt for that day, just for people to know I'm kind of like that. I have specific shirts and outfits that I usually wear for certain workouts. I kind of coordinate myself that way. I don't know what's wrong with me, but if that's anyone that had any questions on it, that's, there's your answer. And it doesn't smell. I actually smell good usually most of the time. So well, I shower twice a day. 
Um, so today was the, uh, well, it is today again, breaking the uh, time continuum here, but uh, yesterday for the listeners is today for us. So time is linear, man-made, blah, blah, blah. You've heard it before. Um, we're doing our Halloween party today. Mm, I got a text I from have, you guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have the Spider-Man uh, outfit that or costume that I've been trying to, you know, wear for a couple of years now um mm-hmm. relevantly because i could just wear it around my house nobody sees you know um <laughs> so i was wearing it today and first of all i'm basically walking around the gym in my underwear um because i'm in like skin tight and it's literally just there's room for underwear and i have socks on just because i feel weird being barefoot in it mm-hmm. um but being in a gigantic gym with a bunch of people and feeling naked the whole time mm-hmm. very very uncomfortable sensation but then also none of my clients could look at me because i was fucking spider-man and they couldn't take me seriously but having worn it i worn it from i got there at like 5 a.m so i had it on first session and then i wore it clean through until around 8 30 or 9 mm-hmm. having put that much time in the suit and having this gigantic fucking mess of a beard to navigate where I had to like tie it up and knot it up. And it had 12 inches of beard, like all tucked up and hidden and bound. Mm-hmm. It created this gigantic heat sink oh. and the lenses like completely fogged over. <laughs> and I couldn't see a fucking thing. I couldn't see faces. I couldn't see numbers. I could, barely see where i was going but i was like tripping over shit and so i had to like i had to run home and take it off because i was like a hazard um so my first outing as spider-man was not that successful and then the ironic thing was spider-man's supposed to have like really good grip but the texture of the suit is very smooth so certain things i just couldn't grab like it would just slide right off Mm -hmm. But I did pull 275 off the ground to Spider-Man, so that was nice. Nice. I remember when you first bought it a couple of years ago. It was pretty cool. I've been really many. I haven't just I haven't done anything fun for Halloween in like a couple of years. I think the last time that I actually put an effort to dress up as something was in 2016. So it's yeah. been definitely like a while since I've actually done anything. Um, I have a friend that wants to go out this weekend and do something, but Halloween-ish. But dude, I literally probably wear the shirt. <laughs> uh but no i was gonna ask you about the beard like how did the face look with that much hair for people that don't know your beard's to like to your tits man like they're just down yeah so again third reason to go on youtube uh you can see how high up my beard goes yeah dude for people that are not watching i mean he literally can give himself a wig yeah i can i can pull hair from my chin to the top of my head it's pretty fucking long um Mm -hmm. so basically what i had to do was i had to hair tie it like Mm -hmm. that create like it was it visible point with the the face oh yeah oh yeah definitely um and then from there i have to put my microphone down basically create like a a point right there and then take the excess and like curl it up into like a little Mm -hmm. ball and then tuck it underneath wow like that and then take another hair tie and then scrunch it all together and then just smush it in like this and then just pull the mask down real quick. That's commitment. It didn't work very well though. Cause as soon as the mask was on and like the tension of the beard being all wrapped up, like started to win against the tension on the hair tie and it started mm-hmm. to just like Bold. slowly drop. And it just looked like I had this gigantic jawline. Um, <laughs> so it didn't quite work. Yeah, no, I, I, I now thinking about the first thing I thought was just how your mask looks, because it's literally a suit like tight to the body. It's not like one of those um, old costumes back when we were kids that were just like all discombobulated and they just didn't even shape to the body. Right. It was just all over the place. So um, it's a legit, legit suit. You can go fight crime with that. Yeah, well, I had to I had to get circumference measurements into the website. Um, as far as arms, torso, legs, and how I- much have you changed since then too? Like I know when you got it, dude, you were like in pretty good shape. You were like lean. It's pretty aesthetic. A little, it's a little loose around the legs and the arms. <laughs> it is still skin tight, but it's not as tight as it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've de- I, I've definitely lost some uh, some 
some circumference for for sure but um <laughs> fortunately i don't have the dad bod um so it's not like i was walking around with a fucking beer gut mm-hmm. i don't recommend people stop eating and drinking water but with how busy i've been i haven't been eating or drinking as much as i should so i'm basically like a basically like a two by four right now i'm very mm-hmm. very lean uh, but not in a good way i'm like skinny fat mm-hmm. um so it fit. It just didn't fit quite the same as it did when I was in yeah. good shape and wearing it. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I'm starting like uh, talking about skinny fat. I'm actually starting. I've been sustaining the weight that I've been wanting to hold about 170. I've been holding on to that weight pretty good for people that don't know. I usually stand on average for the most part, 160, 165. Typically that's where I range year round is around that. So I was able to kind of keep myself a little bit heavier. Um, just get my body used to that weight, um, working hard, lifting weights. You know, we are fitness people. We do try to our best to stay in shape. I have a little bit more free time when it comes to that, just cause I'm the only one that doesn't have kids and a wife. So it's literally, I've been really pushing that threshold for myself a little bit, working on my strength. Um, and it's been good. I've been actually repping like 80 pound dumbbells, uh, for reps for like sets, four sets of eight and stuff, chilling. I mean, usually where that was like really t- wearing down on my arm that I got injured a couple of years ago, my chest. So everything's been going good. I'm a starting a, a cut though, because I have a big trip planned. Like it's a week long trip in Tulum, Mexico in January. So I'm going to start kind of a cut. I'm actually hiring one of my buddies just to kind of keep me accountable. Um, just a good friend of mine that's really well versed in nutrition I could do it by myself, but I really just want to focus on my programming and I don't want to think about, you know, making those adjustments. I just want someone to keep me. And I, and I, and I, and I say this because I think it's important. I was talking to, I was talking to this about a, with another client about how, you know, it's still important for us, even knowing stuff, it's always valuable to be investing in our education, investing in some type of mentorship, investing in some type of coaching. Um, because how can we like, realistically, how can we expect someone to invest, you know, thousands of dollars into us when we don't even invest anything. And this comes from books, even this comes from other stuff. It doesn't have to be like a person, but just stuff. Right. And you're just doing stuff to expand. So in this case, it's been a while since I've actually hired someone. I've bought a lot of books. I have a lot of stuff, material, and it's just nice to have that human connection though. It's someone that I literally see it very often and I trust. So he's going to be helping me get in some pretty good shape. Cause I want to, it's been a while since I've dug in, into getting leaner and where not competition shape, I won't get that crazy, but I've been really wanting to kind of test myself and push myself in that regard. So let's see how it goes. It'll be like about eight weeks, pretty aggressively. Um, don't recommend for most to do that. I usually take it a lot more slow, but in this case, it's just rip the bandaid off. Actually on that note, I don't think I got that message. I don't, I don't think it's sent. So this is news to me. <laughs> I appreciate the income though. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're going to hire me, right? <laughs> I'm going to sign up at crunch fitness on cave. Coral. You, you can, you can help ask feed for, my child. Ask for Mike. Yeah. Um, um, actually on that note, um, One of the trainers, so I'm, I'm like officially a manager in training right now. So one of the trainers, his name's Jacob. He calls me manager, Mike, and he asked mm-hmm. me a bunch of fucking questions now. And I, I appreciate it. It's kind of fun, but he came up to me. He was like, I have this guy that like, I've, I've tried to reschedule him like several times and like, he just won't come in and like, we're checking his history and he's had a couple kickoffs scheduled and he never shows and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, what's his name? And I like look in the corner and it's fucking Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, he, he's oh, not coming in. Like, don't oh, even worry no. about it. Oh, no. That, and that name <laughs> sounds so familiar, too, because I think I was with him when he got called a yeah. while ago. This is when, like, last month. No kidding. He never. He told me he was going to go, at least. And I told him to go. I mean, why not? Like, just go. I mean, like, it's up to him if he wants to purchase anything. But that's so funny that <laughs> for people that don't know, that's my brother. That's my brother. So he lives with me. And obviously there's obvious reasons as to why he probably wouldn't pay for a trainer. That's what I was, Um, that's what I was telling him. I was like, bro, like if you knew his brother, he's not signing up. Like, 
he's got all the help he needs or wants at pretty like, much across the hall like he's he's not gonna sign up don't even worry about right it right now he's right now he's finishing up maps aesthetic so he you know he's running a good program he's been consistent as hell he's been doing really good man he's gained about 20 pounds already he's been trying to gain my brother's very thin i can tell he's actually he's actually getting like he's filling out his frame and i'm happy for him he's been he's found kind of his like the love for it. And I think that's like a very important thing that people have to go through is that they have to find the love for that process. And I was just talking to even another client, I was telling her like, you gotta, as long as you're happy, cause she doesn't even know what she wants to necessarily do. She's in really good shape right now. She looks phenomenal. Um, she just wants to learn obviously better with nutrition. She wants to learn uh, certain techniques and certain uh, form checks and just uh, be, be with someone to push her and without her getting hurt, you know, and that's, and that's also a very valuable um, experience because I'm going to be able to teach her certain things that maybe she would be too, too nervous or too afraid to do on her own. Cause you know, if, with all like it's, it is a little bit intimidating putting some heavy weight on your back or picking up some weight and you're, and you're kind of concerned, like, am I doing this right type thing? So um, I told her, hey, as long as you're like loving this and you're having fun and you're looking forward to coming in at least once a week and uh, you're making the most of it, when you're ready to say like, I'm going to cut or I'm going to do a nice big bulk or I'm going to do whatever, but you got to like love it first. I mean, you just got to just enjoy it. And especially if you're not like in a position where you're suffering, like you're not like restricting and you're having to be super disciplined and rigid. I told her you're in a place that most people wish they could be in. So you just get to have fun and get strong. And that's the best part about the gym. I think that muscle building is hard, but it's such a fun process. I would, I'd rather be on that end of the spectrum than, you know, having to like really practice that self-discipline, even though I think cutting overall from the, the process standpoint is much simpler. It's not easy, but it's more simple. But building muscle, you got to like make sure you're training appropriate amount of stimulus, you're eating enough calories, you're eating when you're not really hungry sometimes. It's a, it's a little bit of work, but if you love it, man, it's just something you look forward to. When you eat, you like enjoy it so much. You're like, you know, I'm just going to have a great session tomorrow type thing. So there's definitely like some factors that um, are important. But um, uh, this actually will be a perfect segue into the topic at hand. What did you say? Uh, yes, I would agree. I was just about Perfect. to say that. Yeah, so breaking through the weight loss plateaus, we we're talking about both uh, cases, but a lot of these, uh, we're, we're talking, uh, you were talking to me about a client that, um, kind of is going through some, you know, they're hitting their, their process, may, the, the, the process is maybe slowing down a little bit for them. They're maybe not seeing the results as like at a, at a steady pace, which is very normal for well, anyone going through it. Go ahead. This is, this is your, your prototypical, you know, mid forties female that wants to lose weight. She's at a point where she weighs like 139 pounds. So she doesn't have that much to lose because mm -hmm. she's already gone so far, but she's stuck and her calories are already 1200, mm -hmm. 1100, somewhere around there. And she's not like a super small person. She's, she's got a little bit of size to her. She's like five foot eight, 139 mm -hmm. pounds. So she's lean. Um, but she's kind of muscular. She's very active. She does several classes most days out of the week. She goes on walks. She's doing all the right things, except the calories have been just lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And, lower. and she's not receptive to eating more. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we can, you know, go into a, a small bulking phase and then pulling back on the calories a little bit, switching up the routine a little bit, and then just kind of cycling around kind of like what we talk about on the episode. So on the, on the show so often, um, so what we're doing is we're keeping the activity levels the same, but we're now undulating her carbohydrate intake around the activities mm -hmm. that she's doing. So if she's coming, she's coming in and meeting with me three times a week for an hour, I have her do 20 to 30 grams of like sugar or carbohydrates right before. So she's nice and energized because she does a class before, and then she comes over. Mm -hmm. um, and then she has a little bit of a more carbohydrate heavy meal afterwards. She's also vegan. So kind of limited on protein and whatnot, but mm -hmm. um but then through the rest of her day, she sticks to mainly, you know, higher protein options for vegan and then obviously a shit ton of vegetables that are lower in carbohydrates. So, um, and that's starting to work for her where we're just kind of manipulating her, 
her energy system in a certain type of way, just through the carbohydrates. And that's starting to yield us a little bit of a result um, without reducing her overall amount of calories because we reasonably can't. And I, in a perfect world, I told her I would like to see you eating more, but, um, but yeah, so that's kind of where like the uh, topic or the idea comes from, at least for the, for this episode. Yeah, no, uh, I think that's a good, and I, I like, cause like, I didn't ask much questions. Um, I didn't ask many questions when you brought it up to me. I just kind of wanted to save it for the show. Cause a lot of the stuff that we do is structured, but it's also kind of off the cuff when it comes to such uh, conversations about clients. And uh, because there might be someone listening right now, and this may be you that you're kind of there, you're kind of close to where you want to be. Maybe you just want to like my client that I just mentioned to you before, like I said, she, if you look at her, she looks in great shape. She looks great. You know, she's not, she's a, she's a good high, good weight range. Um, what she wants to do is just get stronger, tighten up, you know, and, and women you'll use the, the word tone. They want to tone up, but basically inherently what that means for listeners, it just means you're building because muscles either build or they're shrinking. It's like, that's the function of the muscle. Um, so what happens are we're right now we're, we're, I'm setting up her calories right now. And I know she's open to, uh, you know, mo- moving it where I need to move it. If I need, like, if I say, Hey, let's like, let's bump that up a little bit. Um, I know she's very receptive to that change, but, um, in the, in this case of your client, you said that she's not really like inclined to move, uh, up in food. No, she's not. And we are, well, I am working on that with her. Because she's got that stigma in her head, um, mm, and you know, rightfully so. Hearing you know, eat more food, you're not going to gain a bunch of body fat. I promise. Like it's mm. it's a tough sell, you know. Yeah. But I am kind of tricking her into doing it without her realizing it in a very well intended way. Where I'm just having mm. her like throw in, like if she's having a salad, like throw some sunflower seeds in for the protein. Mm-hmm. It'll bump up her calories a little bit. So yeah. I'm kind of sneaking them in there through her vicariously through her but Mm -hmm. um no and i mean she's she's very like almost too healthy with the way that she eats where she does zero processed foods it's always organic it's always natural Mm -hmm. um you know farm fresh type shit she's one of those people so like i completely admirable that you can do that and that that lifestyle works for you but Mm -hmm a lot of those kinds of foods are just naturally lower in calories. So it's tough for her to add in an extra meal because she's still full from the gigantic salad full of vegetables and all these other things that she's already eating. So yeah, um, it's, it's a bit of a slow process. I'll I'll get her to come around. It just takes time. You know how it is, but yeah. um, In order to, to satisfy the, I want to lose weight like sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. we're taking this route. And like I said, I'm, I'm trying to sneak in a little bit of extra just to uh, fuel it. Cause I know she is doing a lot. Um, I think that listening to this, it just kind of reminds me of why this uh, one-on-one coaching is so important because it, people don't understand. Like people think, I don't know who I was talking to. They said like, Oh, it's like, um, I know this one trainer somewhere that if you, if you don't do what he says, you know, he just kicks you out and, or like fires you or whatever, like what or the case may be. And I've had only maybe one or two incidents where I've had to get rid of a client, but it wasn't because of their compliance issue. For the most part, people that invest in me at one point are trying to do something that I'm telling them, even if it's not hundred percent, but, um, we listen, we know this, we know how people are like, they hire us because they aren't us. They, you know, if that makes sense, like you, 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 um, you hire someone to do your tile because probably you don't want to, you don't like that and you don't know about it. So you are hiring someone to do it for you. In this case, you're hiring someone to help guide you to what you need to do, educate you, teach you these things. Um, So it's, it's, you know, you're doing it because maybe you're not that passionate about fitness. You don't care about reading tons of articles and going through hours of content on your own. And maybe you're obviously you're listening to a podcast because you have some interest and some inclined. So I know this might be a little bit different, but understanding that I told her it's, it depends because I know that for some people, a lot of this is in the mind. A lot of this is, you know, behavioral stuff. And this doesn't just, we obviously know that a lot of the processes, if you just do X, Y, and Z, typically will start to kind of put you in that direction of desired outcome. But if you can get, if you can't get your mind to cooperate or you can't align yourself well, like internally, like it's hard for your, you to want to follow whatever 
it is, especially if you have any type of stuff that's maybe blocking that understanding. Maybe you logically know that she, she's not going to gain a bunch of fat because she bumped up her calories by 200 calories. But maybe like you never know what happened years ago that she has that stuck in her mind that she's petrified of food. And you have to like, we have to understand that, you know, when we talk to someone about this. So, um, but to not go off too much on a tangent, a couple of things that come to mind with this in the way of, you know, tricking her in with good intentions, I think this will be a very good way to kind of make her hungry. And we, we know is by, you know, really challenging, changing her focus off just the food. She's already eating very well. So I, the fact that she's eating, uh, she's chasing nutritious food is obviously we can just put more nutritious food into that. And you, you did a very good job with just adding stuff to her current salads. Just in little by little, you're adding 50 calories, hundred calories per meal. And eventually she's going to be eating more. But the other way I would say in a situation like this, and this is also even for my client, I know she listens. Um, and then she's listened to this. She might like be able to say like, Oh, this is me. This is what he's talking about. Um, when it comes to the desired goal, which is building muscle, getting tighter, there's nothing better that you can do than chasing strength in the gym, getting, getting stronger on your lifts, lifting more weight, doing more reps, uh, of, of desired out exercises and chasing progression. This is why like, you know, I encourage most of my clients to jot stuff down. So make sure that, cause I know that it's easier to fall in love with working out and the feeling of working out because you're getting something instant from it. It's, it takes a little bit, sometimes a longer, a little longer for some people to connect the nutrition piece to it. But if they can do that, you know, if we can ch challenge their strength because their body is now getting that signal that they're, they need to overcome this load and become efficient at it and become better and adapt their, their metabolism, we know starts to kind of increase that hunger sensation typically is there. And it's just your body saying, I need more fuel to feed this, this tissue that requires more calories. So the, it, your body's going to let you know, and little by little, you just keep adding more good stuff, you know, just adding more good stuff. And I think obviously she's focused more on nutrition and, and healthy and cleaner food. Um, so, Hey, fuck it. Add more, add more uh, spinach, add more of these seeds, add more of these, uh, these, of uh, these vegan friendly options or vegetarian options, whatever she eats, you know, into her current nutrition, just a little bit, just a little, just add like a couple hundred, a couple 50 to hundred calories more per meal. And little by little, she's going to start to get leaner or, or she'll feel that she's getting leaner because she's building more muscle because now her body's more burning more calories in and all that. So I think that'd be a, a great suggestion for her. And I think that because if she's already in about 1200 calories, we know we're on the lower end of the spectrum and she's five, eight, she's not like a five foot girl, you know, she's actually yep. pretty tall. Um, so <laughs> tall for me. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to just to kind of not continue to pull away because then we know that the nutrition options may be a little bit limited and we want to keep her nice and fed. Um, especially if she's very close to her goal, this is the point where we would actually advocate for our listeners and people that are going through this, that it's not always about seeing that scale go down. It's going to be, um, sometimes at this point is just trying to keep the weight about the same, but changing the body fat measurements and changing the lean mass, uh, measurement. You know, we want to see that lean body mass continue to go up. Maybe the measurements changing in particular areas, as well as the body fat beginning to increase, but you weigh about the same. And that's probably where she's probably at. She can stay around that 130 range and look phenomenal. You know, it's just, it's going to be a slower process, which it seems that she's enjoying it with you. Like, you know, working out, showing up. So dude, you're, she's going to be on the right path in no time. Dude, that's actually really funny because I told her that and she was like, oh, I'll go get a scale that does body fat and lean body mass and all that stuff so that I can monitor that. And I was just like, so now every time I see her, she tells me what her body fat percentage is for the day because she mm -hmm. does it every single morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, I created a monster doing this, but I had, it's almost like I learned most of this from the same people or from you directly. Um, Cause that's the exact same conversation that I had with her. I mean, if we're trying to build muscle, mm -hmm. you're going to see the weight kind of go up a little bit, maybe yeah. if we're not burning fat at the same time. And that's exactly what she just told me today and has told me before where we first started scales, not moving scales, not moving. I talked to her about body fat percentage. And then she realizes like, okay, I'm starting to build muscle and burn fat. And that's like giving me the desired result. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I had the same exact conversation this week. We're literally starting more 
barbell style movements where we're mm -hmm. intentionally going a little bit heavier and changing up the routine and the approach that we're taking so that we mm -hmm. can kind of, first of all, get a different stimulus. But secondly, we're getting the uh, metabolic response that we're looking for out of it because lifting heavier does tend to lend itself a little bit better. So, mm -hmm. and then completely on a side note, that's really, really funny. Um, I was trying to teach her how to do a conventional deadlift and she, her brain wouldn't let her break the weight off the floor. Mm -hmm. But if I told her to do a deep Romanian deadlift to the point where it touched the floor, she could do it just fine. Mm-hmm that small difference between just picking it up off the ground or holding it and going down to the ground and then coming back up, it completely, <laughs> it worked for some reason. I thought that was so funny, but yeah, it's, it's crazy how like the mind works and like how you have to get creative with certain clients and, and the way you explain things. And there's an art to it, man. Like there's an art to kind of get your point across. Like you're literally, it's like when you're teaching a, a, a kid in school, like so one kid might get it one way. The other kid, you have to make you break it down a little bit. It's the same lesson, but you have to just adapt it. And same thing with coaching. You, if you're teaching the same exercise, maybe those set cues may not work for them, or maybe the same information that you're giving them about nutrition or the an, um, the uh, anecdotes that you're using, it's not um, it's not going to work. You know, you kind of want to make that adjustment. Um, that's going to be it's going to make them click. What's well, going to click in their mind, and they're going to be like, ah. Now I get it. And things start to flow. And especially if you're new and you're getting used to your coach um, or you're getting used to your client, there's a learning curve. It's almost like a new relationship, right? You don't know everything about what this person's going through, who yep. they are, their moods, like how, how they like, you know, how they communicate better. Is it more visual stuff? Is it more just explanation? Is it written? Is it digital? Like you have to kind of find all these ways to kind of get your point across. Now, let's say it's not this person. Um, it's to say it's someone else that's been going through their weight loss journey and they're actually trying to lose a couple, a good amount of pounds. They get to a point where they've already knocked off a significant amount of weight. You've already done the bulk of the work. We're talking 20 plus pounds where you're starting to notice like a really big shift in your, and we have to get the weight down because it is relatively high. You have a lot of excess body fat, but like anything, just like this person, just like said person losing weight, they're going to hit a wall eventually because that's just how it works. That's just your, what the process is like, is identical. You still have to go through the same principles, but you're going to have to move specific variables at certain times. Um, and you're going to, as the coach working with this person, we have to kind of know what would probably be more beneficial for this person at this point. Is it calorie deficit through nutrition, or is this going to be, let's say if they're stuck and they're already eating about 1500 calories before you make that drop to 1300 calories, let's say you, let's, we're looking at their steps. We just, anal we took another variable that we're creating that deficit is there maybe their movement or like daily exercise. All right, Susie, I want you to do, um, you're hitting about 7,000 steps at this point, we're eating about 1500 calories and we're starting to stay very stagnant for a couple of weeks. It's been staying about the same. Let's bump you up to uh, either eight or 9,000 cal uh, steps a day. And then this person begins to add maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes of mo movement a day. They can break it up into intervals, whatever the case may be, but then they are then uh, creating that that additional signal to the body that could potentially break through that plateau without removing more food. And you, as a coach, you just make the, and as the person may be doing this by yourself, you have to kind of look at your life and see, mm, am I eating? Am I feeling good eating this amount of food? Would it mean taking away more food, even though it's correct? Would this be more beneficial for me to actually reach my goal? Or do I want to, can I afford to add 15 more minutes of movement a day, whatever the case may be, or X amount of steps, X amount of minutes of cardio. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily more weight training sessions, depending on if you're doing at least two to three. Um, you have to look at all these different things, but these are, you know, an easy way that I love to do is just move more. And it's not a lot more. I'm not saying like you're doing 15 minutes. Okay. Do an hour. <laughs> no, it's literally adding maybe another 10 to 15 minutes to that current, because I know that realistically, if the person doesn't want to keep pull, pulling food, pulling food, pulling food, or they're already at a point where they're 1200 calories, let's just keep adding a little bit more activity. And that way, 
we're continuing to focus on the good stuff. We're keeping the nutrition about the same. They're not stressing about the food anymore. Now their focus each day is maybe let me get those 15 minutes of walking in. And that can be, that can be a help to break through that plateau. Yeah. And then just to kind of touch on this as well, because I know somebody out there is thinking about this. How do, how do I know, you know, how much I'm eating or if I'm eating enough. And I would say, honestly, if you just sit there and think about it, most people have a good idea of whether or not they're eating a lot or eating a little just through the 150 people that I just spoke to over the last two or three months. You know, when we talk about nutrition, I eat too much or I don't eat enough or I don't eat very much at all. It, you, you have a pretty good idea, whether you realize it or not, on how much you're eating, whether or not you know how many calories that is. And then from there, you can pretty much take like a almost do like an RPE or a rate of perceived exertion for your own food of like, can I actually eat any less than I am now? And it's already like, okay, no, I'm like, I don't like, okay, I'll, I'll use myself as an example right now. Like, could I eat any less right now than I currently am? Fuck no. I would literally be starving to death if I ate any less than I was right now. And I already know that I'm on the starving side of the scale. Mm-hmm. And I know that there's other people out there as well. Like, just like me with really busy schedules and a kid and she's just not prioritizing yourself anymore. You know, deep down that you couldn't eat any less and vice versa. If you're way overeating, you're probably aware of it, whether you're subconsciously snacking or actively just gorging yourself every single night. So, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, like an honest assessment of yourself, just ask yourself, like, am I eating a lot? Am I eating a little? And then from there, if, you can't eat any less than you currently are, then you have to figure out something else, adding more movement or switching your mindset up and eating a little bit more, changing your focus, and then pulling back on calories again in a couple of weeks or months. You got to figure out another way to go about doing this because you are going to run into that eventually. If you just reduce, 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 there's going to be a certain point where you're like, I can't even lick a fucking grape. How am I going to continue to lose weight? So that's a very, very easy way of like looking at it. And then obviously if you're tracking your calories, we're saying 1200 calories, 1200 calories, any lower than that, unless you're like four foot five, you're probably going to run into some issues there. So that's pretty standard as like a bare minimum. I mean, there's yeah, for most. I that, mean, but... some, some people that are small can afford to eat a little less if you're five foot and you're like a hundred pounds. Yeah, your body realistically doesn't need more, like it doesn't need that much calories. It just gets a little bit tough to, you know, to purport, you know, especially if you're portioning out your macros out a bit, it gets a little bit tough. It's doable. I mean, it's just a little bit, a little bit of pain in the ass, honestly. It's, but it's, yeah. like I said, it's totally doable. You'd be better suited to speed your metabolism up through eating more, exercising more, and then you have a lot more wiggle room. Everybody on planet Earth loves to eat. I don't care what the fuck you say eating more food. And this is exactly the conversation that I'm leading up to with my client. It's like, you want to eat more. You just, there's something in here that's stopping you from doing it. And you would be a happier human if you didn't have to calculate it out so tediously. So in my opinion, if you have time and you have the right mindset, speeding up your metabolism, eating a little bit more, that gives you so much more wiggle room, so many more options. That would be, go ahead. No, what I wanted to say, some people just need that, that refeed, that, that time yeah. that where they are purposely incorporating more food to, if you, especially if you've been in a low calorie state for your body for a while, your body has figured it out and become efficient at that. That's the, that's an adaptation. It doesn't mean that we use uh, you breaking your metabolism or to that your metabolism is broken. It's, it doesn't necessarily break. I want to kind of clarify that your metabolism doesn't break your meta. If your metabolism is broken, you're dead. Um, so, (laughs) so you want, so what I want to make is that like your body is, is, has adapted. Your body is an efficient learning machine. It it figures things out on its own to, to just run very comfortably. So your body now is accustomed to hypothetically a thousand calories if you're on that lower end. Right. So there's going to be specific coach. And this is why it's valuable to have a coach to kind of educate you and guide you that you trust. That's going to be able to get you out of maybe these, these little bit of these, uh, kind of these, these plateaus, sure. Or these ruts that you may be stuck in that you feel like, oh, fuck, I, I'm doing everything. Where I, what do I have to do? Sometimes, unfortunately, you're going to have to switch gears, which is very hard sell for people. But yep. I think that if you're tired of just not getting results, 
And as a coach, if you, if you do, you, uh, you really paint the picture well and you show them optimally, then you're going to be okay. Um, what I wanted to say though, for, uh, other, other aspects here, I love wearables. I love tracking the, having the ability to track your food, having a food scale using apps, obviously the wearables like Fitbit, Apple watch, whatever you want to use. I love them, but let's say you're not a person that has this, right. And you're not a person that doesn't really, uh, you just like, you'll do everything in your power to avoid it. Right. You have the clients like, I'm just doing all this. Do you track? No. Okay. And then you have to kind of change the conversation. If they're working with me, typically that is a, that is a must because at this point I know what's, if I can get you there a little bit more efficiently, I just need to know specific things because it's hard for me to guess everything, yep. right? So if I'm guessing, I can eventually roughly figure it out. But let's say you are against it. You don't like it. It seems whatever to you. Um, you would have to really make a, a, a judgment call based on how much time you are spending moving with walking or any type of cardio that you're doing, you have to know the amount of time that you're doing. And maybe you can use this as a, tra- as a metric, you know, to increase said time to by increments to get to a desired point that just, and I would do this just like we would with tracking steps, do it in a very gradual fashion. That way you can just like tracking would be like to make sure you're hitting that extra thousand steps. You're able to accomplish that goal that you set out for yourself. You want to be able to set small uh, goals that are challenging enough to elicit change, but they're still very doable that you can, you can hit it nine out of 10 times. Um, Same thing with nutrition. If you're not tracking your food and you're not really being consistent there with you plugging it into the app using a food scale, We talked about this, and this is actually a point that I wasn't even going to make a separate episode, but this will be a good way to kind of give some takeaways for the people that maybe not tracking. Using the same type of uh, serving utensils and using the same type of plates and or bowls uh, for foods that you're eating relatively consistent, or just the food's going to stay in that. You're not going to go to the bigger bowl. You're going to stay in that bowl that only X amount of food fits in. That is a form of tracking. And then little by little, you can move into a smaller bowl or use one less serving of that set cup that you're using maybe for your rice or whatever. You're just using specific, because if you notice like restaurants, like let's say a Chipotle or a Moe's or something like that, foods that have these, if you notice all the, the why they have these standard measurements is because the utensils they use are relatively close to that measurement. Same thing you can do at home if you're someone that doesn't want to track, have X amount of meals that you consistently hit. So you have said you have three meals, let's say you have to not have five meals of the same thing. And then some days you have two. you want to have roughly about the same consistent routine and flow, as well as the same type of utensils that you're using to serve you Um, using this and then obviously adjusting without using a food skip is a form of tracking to a point that I think that you're going to need to get more specific depending on who you are. But if you're someone that's just looking for general weight loss and you just care more about just getting out of a, an unhealthy state, this could be an easy way to incorporate things without being, without it seeming too tedious. There might be still a little bit of planning involved. Of course, I think planning just helps you succeed a lot smoother. Having a plan of action is just better, but this is a way that you can navigate life a little bit more. Um, without having to be using apps and technology. This is what I'll usually do with my older clients that are at a point now, like 70 years old, that they just don't, they're they're not going to figure out my fitness pal. It's just not going to do it. So this is a way that I would do for them. And that way they can also have a form of tracking using measurements, measuring cups, using teaspoons, certain spoons that they're using, all that stuff. So all those things are going to be valuable. And they're, they're a form of tracking that you can do it to make some adjustments over the course of time. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I would even say, um, you know, anybody that says, I'll go on the other side of the coin. Um, anybody that's, you know, thinks tracking is tedious or obsessive or anything like that, just kind of think about your life and think about anything. You check Instagram 47 times a day or you weigh yourself every morning. Those things are tedious. Those things are obsessive. Like you're making an argument against something while you're doing the same exact thing with other things. Mm -hmm. And this is something that will actually benefit you. Whether or not you know what to do with those numbers, that's a whole separate argument because just tracking your calories and not changing anything Mm -hmm. may not work for you. But 
that's where we come to play. Of course, you can always message us and ask us for any advice or what to do next or whatever, but Mm -hmm. don't let laziness be something that keeps you from doing this. Even if it's just for a short period of time, you don't have to track your calories for the rest of your life. Give it a couple months, learn the value of the food that you're eating, get a better understanding for where your metabolism is, how you can change it. And you'll be better off for the rest of your life for that experience. And then who knows, it may be something you actually enjoy kind of like what we talk about with scheduling, where if you're a little bit more strict on your schedule, you're actually liberating so much of your time. The same thing could apply with the amount of calories that you're consuming. As soon as you realize just numbers that they can change and you realize that, you know, eating a whole entire pint of Ben and Jerry's every once in a while, as long as it still fits your calories, it's not so bad. It's not going to be the end of the world. So it's kind of liberating in a certain way. You just kind of have to get over the hump and you got to stop telling yourself that it's tedious and annoying because it's, it's really not, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're 85 and you can't even log into Facebook, there's other routes that will explore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I don't know how you found this, but um, there's, there's, of course, there's other ways to do it. And I, that's exactly the route that I take as well. Just use, use measuring tools. You know what's what's funny uh, about that, Mike, is that I do that now because I don't track everything super hard right now. I will be like in the next couple of days, but right now I use the same bowls for specific foods. I use the same amount of like, let's say if I'm having eggs, I usually have the same amount of eggs kind of pretty standard. So my foods are pretty repetitive as well as the only thing I track is usually the way I prepare certain like Greek yogurt mixes with fruit and all that just to have the perfect ratios. But overall, like I use the same plates. I don't use the fairly big plates and then I, and then I switch them on and off. It's like, I use the same plate. So typically like if the way that it looks on the plate is, is filled X amount, it takes up that X amount of space. I know that's approximately a, around the same range of calories week in and week out. And I eat, a, eat kind of cycle the same foods because the foods that are fast, convenient, and I enjoy, and that can hit my targets. So you do it long enough. It becomes, you don't have to take all these extra steps. You're just, you're kind of, you're in a rhythm. You have a flow with things, but at the beginning, and or if you're stuck, you're trying to break through that, like that plateau that you've been stuck at for a while. And I'm talking about a real plateau that you've been there for at least a month. Not that like you've been there for a week and you were on your period that day or guys, you went drinking that day with your buddies and like, you you're just, you know, you're not on a plateau. You just did more shit that you normally wouldn't do on a normal basis. It's just things that happen. You, you were talking about weeks, a month that you've been very consistent. Everything's been going good. It's just, oh shit, your body finally has adapted. Cool. This is a good sign. We have maximized that potential, that specific, those variables. Now let's make one or two max adjustments, small, subtle tweaks. Boom right on track again. So, um, you'll be blown away by just, obviously I have, can't stress this now. You have stressed this enough. You have to be patient through the process. You can't get ahead of yourself. Um, having people to keep you accountable, a coach, friends, whatever, just, um, just to make sure that you're not jumping the gun, because then if you do something way too radical, it's like Gabe's analogy, you know what I said the other anecdote I said anecdote it was saying analogy I just caught myself that's the word I was looking for analogy uh when I said an anecdote uh, correct it sub it in for analogy but Gabe's analogy of over salting your food if you just wait do way too much that you don't need to uh you could have probably definitely scaled back a little bit you can always add more guys don't get ahead of yourself you're probably doing everything right and this shit just takes time that's just the, the final truth of the matter it does. I'll, I'll quote Gandhi. Um, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. There you go. You can plant take that tree. however you want. <laughs> plant your tree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> plant um, your tree. No. Um, but yeah, I think we pretty much covered every point there. What'd you say? Yeah. Yes. Anything? And I have a Friday. I have a Friday joke for you. For um, did you, did you see on the news? Did you hear about the guy that uh, dipped his nuts in glitter? No. It's pretty nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. You're horrible. That's it. That's, that's a good way to, that's a good way to end the week. I would say, and jump into the weekend. 
Uh, but like I said, listeners, if you guys like this information, make sure to go ahead and share this with someone that's kind of struggling and thinks that they hit a plateau and maybe some ways that they can get out of it. Um, if you haven't already, like I said, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're trying to grow that uh, side of the platform and as well as our Instagram handles. You can check us out, connect with us, socialize. We're more on Instagram than anything. Me personally, I know I am. Um, my personal account, well, it's first at the next level show. We got to give credit to the next level show. We have my personal page at John Alva Fitness. Gabe is at Prime and Glory, and Mr. Mike is at Mike Nellis BT. And we'll catch you on the next one.